بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله النعمة المهداة والرحمة المزداة وعلى أعوذ بالله من شرور الأنفس ومن سيئات الأعمال ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد وما يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أما بعد الحمد لله this is the beautiful gathering in the month of Ramadan in the month of action الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم have done more actions in the month of Ramadan more than in the other month and he was more generous in the month of Ramadan more than in other months. In the month of Ramadan that Muslims have seen the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life of Rasulullah from the opening of Mecca and the, the winning of Badr. Today, alhamdulillah, that the Muslims have gathered here today for a beautiful cause. Uh, I, as the brother Imam Jawhari have said, I work with the people of other faith in different programs, uh, whether homelessness or domestic violence. And I see people come around uh, uh, common ground or come for a good cause. Now is the first time in, I've seen, actually in America, that we have inter-faith unity, uh, this gathering for a great cause. And may Allah bless uh, Imam Zaid and the others who have really uh, behind, been behind this and initiated this whole uh, project. And inshallah, this is the beginning of many years to come of united together to make a difference. As you know that the uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have uh, called us to ease people's difficulty and hardship. And there's a promise that if we do so, Allah would ease our own difficulty and hardship. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, إن الله عبادا اختصهم لقضاء حوائج الناس. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have chosen people to serve others. Until the day of judgment comes, they will be talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يحادثون الله والناس في الحساب. They will be sitting on the light seats, talking to Allah, why people waiting for their judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those. Uh, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he asked uh, Muhammad bin Munkadir, rahimahullah. Then Rasulullah said to the man, Ya Akhi, ala tad'ullah. Rasulullah, he was moved by the suffering of his companions. And he said, oh my brother, don't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get you out of this difficulty? The man says, I do ask Allah. And Rasulullah asked him, Mada taqulu fi duaik? What do you say in your prayer, supplication? Qal aqul Allahumma in kunta mu'adhibni ba'adaban fil akhirah, fa'ajjilhu li fi dunya. Oh Allah, if you were to punish me in life to come, oh Allah, bring all the punishment in this life. Fabaka al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more tears were shed from his eyes. قال يا أخي إنك لا تطيقه. You will not be able to handle this. هلا قلت. You should have said. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. Oh Allah, give us the best of this world and the best of the world to come and protect us from hellfire. My brothers and sisters. Your gathering today is try to make this world a better, better world so that by doing so, you and I will make our life to come a better world. Because whoever is a difficulty of a Muslim in this life, is Allah will ease the difficulty in life to come. And a Muslim is a compassionate person. He does not see people suffering and stay still. And that's why we, as the Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to represent the mercy to the mankind. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Do you know that in uh, Sudan, about 8 million people affected by malaria, about 4,000 people
every month, not a year, die from malaria. Four thousand people. They estimated about 44 or so, or 48,000 people die of malaria. 30 percent, 30 percent of people hospitalized in Sudan because of malaria. 25 to 40 percent of people visit outpatient clinic in Sudan because of malaria. And a Muslim, when he or she enjoy a comfort of life, they want to share it with others. Alhamdulillah, my children grew up in, you know, growing up in America, when we're visiting Sudan, we have to take malaria bills to protect ourselves from catching malaria. But what will happen to people who don't have access to medical uh, treatment or mosquito nets, simple things. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no one become a true believer until he or she loves to their fellow Muslims what they love for themselves. None of us want to have malaria. Therefore, we should not to want it for other people. And not to want it for other people requires action to prevent it. And therefore, the test of faith for a Muslim is not to claim just that he is a Muslim believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the actions toward humanity in many a hadith of Rasulullah is a manifestation of faith. When the Rasulullah, for example, he says he's not a true Muslim, the one who sleeps with full stomachs, knowing that his neighbor is have suffering from hunger. It's the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he reached out to people who were in need more than anyone else. In matter of fact, one time there was an emergency in Medina and they heard the crying somewhere in Medina and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went and checked it out and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu about to go, they saw Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was coming back. I checked it out. Everything is all right. For a Muslim, is a, a compassionate person. It's a person that cares about other people's um, welfare. The Minister of Health in Sudan, in recent interview, he said that the disease that caused about 40-something people to die in Sudan, it required money, required coordinated effort to eradicate poverty. Because places where they suffered most diseases, uh, the, uh, the spread of malaria, is a place where the uh, community is poor. They don't have access to health care. He said that the village in Sudan that have the age from 5 to 15, 5 to 15, and children, that their children are dying of malaria, they're losing the second generations. And most of the death in Sudan of people of malaria are children and women. We have to think every child is my child and every lady is my mother or my sister or like my wife. To conclude, because I want you to hear Imam Zaid. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave an example and he used fever to draw the concept near to our mind. He says, Kamathal Jasadil Wahid. 
إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسحر والحمى مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم saying the examples of believers like one body and that's why I like what is it it says one body one yes one body one goal he said the examples of the believers like one body and every part of it if any part of it ache in pain sick the rest of it respond with what with pain as well but he said fever and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, uh, more background in medical than anyone that I know here so far. And fever, isn't Sheikh Hamza that meant to respond to something foreign come to the body? Is a sign that the body is rejecting something, fighting something? I want to see the temperature in this room increased when Imam Zaid talks. I want you to have fever today. Fever in the not wishing you to get sick, but the fever of doing something, having an action to promise that all of us who put our hand together and to take this project and we'd be the gift of American Muslims to our fellow Muslims in Africa. To say that the ocean does not create any kind of distance between us because our body is connected. Our soul and spirit are united. And today, especially, we're fasting. That my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have us to go through this experience of fasting by exercising the generosity of giving so that we'll have double reward today, or actually more than one. But we're fasting and we're giving and we put in our head together, ideas together to see what will be the next project after we address this project today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your gathering, bless those who have come and spread the word, those who have not been here, فَلِيُبَلَّقْ الْحَاضِرْ The present, let the present person convey the message to the person who has been absent today and invite them to join us in this effort. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Takbir.